Ooh, that was actually kind of loud. Um... Yes, Hello Titan. We are in fact doing Jumping Flash 2. It was actually funny, because I was like, I was debating, I'm like, well, do I do Jumping Flash 1 or do I do Jumping Flash 2? And I'm like, why don't I do both? Um, could even poke around at Robert Mondew, but set against it because uh, that game's all in Japanese. And I think we already poked around at it once. So granted, we poked at all of these, too. Yeah, I actually... I can't remember if I actually have got a copy of 2 as well. So I put my watch on way too tight. Actually, I had to step away so that I could get my water prepared because the shower felt way too good and I lost track of time in there. Alright. Should all be good. Okay, so... Now that we're all good to go, let's go ahead and get hopping to it. So, hello. Uh, it is 2023, uh, which, according to the Chinese Zodiac, uh, means that it is now the year of the rabbit. Um, so, yeah, there it's year of the rabbit now. Uh, I can't remember if 2022 was the year of the dragon. I think that was. I remember 21... Either that or 21 was the cow? Maybe the ox, I think technically it is, but um, yeah, uh, 2023 is in fact the year of the rabbit. No, it was year of the tiger, because that's what I remember. I just remembered we did the episode based on it. Anyway, um, yes, Benoes, bunnies, rabbits, uh, all sorts of hopping friends who are actually kind of vicious creatures if you're not, you know, there's a reason water ship down exists. Uh, they are fascinating creatures. But weirdly enough, uh, rabbits, I feel like, are a animal that, um, like, don't, like, they get, like, featured as side characters a lot uh, in games, but uh, not really have a whole lot of games to their own. Uh, which is why we are kind of, since it is a new year, uh, I am going to spend some time today, and by some time, I mean all the time today, uh, taking a look at games that I've taken a look at before, uh, <coughs> but uh, that feature rabbits as the main protagonist. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, we have some good, really good stuff actually. Some stuff that was actually really high up, and by that I mean Jumping Flash. Uh, but that'll be towards the end because you got to get through some other stuff. Not that this stuff is terribly bad, but um. Yeah, anyway, uh, bunny games. Uh, we're going to start with the earliest one that I... I'm sure there's stuff like Bugs Bunny games and all that. Um, I was thinking of doing Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout. Uh, but then that game's actually kind of aggressively mediocre. So uh, it's going to spend some more time on some more interesting titles. Uh, this first one that we're going to be doing uh, is... Uh, a game we took a look at the arcade version of. Um, it is a game that technically came out over here, although I think it got a fairly limited release. Uh, it certainly wasn't real, real popular because I think most people, it's one of those games that it got an English release, but most people just know it by its Japanese name. Uh, <coughs> because I think this is available on the Nintendo Switch Arcade Archive, which probably means the PS4 one as well. Uh, but it was released as the Japanese name of it because I think there was also some stuff that got taken out. Uh, of the arcade release, or uh, over here, uh, where it was released as uh, Rabbit Punch. Uh, but Rabiolepis 
uh, is what we're going to be taking a look at first. Uh, in particular, we're going to be taking a look at Rabiolepis Special. Uh, original arcade game was done by um, Video System, who are the people who made um, Aero Fighters uh, and Power Spike. And why can I not? Turbo Door. I was having... Uh, and <laughs> first game we're taking a look at is the port of that game to the PC Engine. Uh, and actually, this recently got a fan translation because there's actually some text in here and some story bits. Uh, so, uh, actually, I probably should have actually loaded up the... Actually, load up the game facts for this because there is actually a cheat that I do want to put in. It doesn't do much, but it is nice to have. Um, it is... Okay. Here we go. So, without further ado... Uh, Rabbi Olympus Special, a uh, fan translation, actually named it Rabbit Punch Special to make it, you know, akin to, um, you know, the proper release. Also, this is probably going to get double audio. Yes, it is. Uh, as you can tell, this is a shmup in which you play as a, uh, little rabbit ship named, uh, I think it's actually Rabio and Lepus. Uh, they get power-ups by collecting bows. And, uh, yeah. It, uh, it, it is kind of what it is. Okay, so, here's what we're gonna do. Okay, so you hold down select, and then you do... One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one. I screwed that up. One, two, three. Oh, right. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one. Oh, I screwed that up already. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one. Why didn't that work? Let me actually do some real quick. That's weird. Oh well, whatever. We're just gonna start normally. Okay, say the princess, I'm here. Yeah, as I seen you too. And welcome to our stream of Banui games. This also very quiet. I think this is just going to be quiet in general. Yep. Gotta get all my stuff in order. There we go. So as you see, you have little homing missiles. Oop. Also, if you get up to close to something, you punch it. Oop. I don't know what hit me. Let's try that again. Also, fun fact, this port was done by uh, Minakuchi Engineer, uh, which is a name that you might be familiar with if you're familiar with the Game Boy uh, Mega Man games, and also Mega Man The Wily Wars, because it's the same porting house that did that, or those two. Oh, there we go. 
I don't know why they put that power up there, because it's impossible to get. Guess who forgot to mute his notifications? I didn't see the projectile. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I get hit by the projectile again. Oh, I, I would kind of screw myself there. Is that game over, or is that... Yep. Okay, we're starting at the beginning of the stage, aren't we? Yep, we are. Okay, so... Oh, right, because it's translation. It doesn't get... Don't get... Mr. Cheats from it. Yeah, the problem is I'm just kind of just getting hit by things that I can't really see, because things are just kind of a little hard to see sometimes. This is the this is the really short work of that. Oh. So this thing has a thing like some shows do, where you just lose the thing if you get hit by anything. Oh, you. Okay. This is very tight. Okay. Good. Can I? Okay. Yep. 
Hopefully, please start me off at the boss. Nope. At least got one stage done. There, we saved this person. Save the king. Yeah, that missile barrage does a real number on things. that's a good enough look at Rabio Lepus special slash rapid punch special uh, it is a good little game or it's a kind of fun all right uh, it has some weird quirks to it but uh, for the most part it is a pretty all right game so let's see Oh, also, let me get the player in order. Okay, there we go. All right. So, Rabiolipus slash Rapid Punch, including special. Ori originally, we had this at, uh, um, originally, we had this at, um, 11, which will put it right in the middle. Like, If I look here, let's see, which mobs do we have here? The Jalico Earth Defense Force, not the, like, EDF Earth Defense Force. Hot Dog Storm. If anything, actually, I think it might be slightly lower, because if I look at 12. Got Nightmare. The original Gradius. Actually, the original Gradius... And then we're going to push this down to 13. Uh, Forgotten Worlds. <laughs> Commando. Pulse of Fury Berserk. Assault. Yeah, I'm thinking 13 for that one. Uh, things just kind of come out way too quickly. And... 
this kind of feels kind of weird in some spots and just like power-ups that just are made to be impossible to get. So, yeah, I'm thinking that we're going to put that at 13. I think the arcade one has a really jarring uh, sound system, which is why the thumbs up is there. Uh, and music, but yeah, I think for the most part it's kind of average for the most part. So, moving right along, we are going uh, from a game that stars a uh, robotic bunny to a different kind of bunny, but this is also a shmup. Uh, this one actually is a uh, game that's on a platform we've not actually touched in a while. Uh, if you're familiar with your console BIOSes, you can tell probably tell exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, because we are going to be moving on to KO Flying Squadron. Uh, which is a game that is on... The Sega CD! I love the Sega CD BIOS. It's very good. It, it's really good. Anyway, I'll start. Oh! Probably should load the game first. This is done by JVC. Like, you know, the VCR people. <laughs> In the eighth year of the KO era, Japan neared the end of its feudal period. The shogunate, facing an uprising by the anti-government movement, asked France for military help in order to suppress the rebellion. As the French were unwilling to assist, the government turned to the American delegation that was visiting Japan at the time to negotiate the Japan-U.S. peace treaty. You see, America was known as the country which had established a unique scientific technology by combining its native Indian shamanism with alchemy from Europe. It was the utilization of this science which had allowed an infant nation to grow into a military giant within only one century. The American delegation's military entourage with its 20-gun mechanized unit was powerful enough to defeat three major armies of the anti-government forces in less than two weeks. This is certainly a plot. This military intervention, as well as the peace treaty with America, forced upon the shogunate by these circumstances, Japan moved ever closer to becoming America's protectorate. Unrelated to these historical proceedings, deep in a mountain north of the capital city lived the descendants of the ancient gods, protecting their ancestors' secret treasure. Down through the ages, their numbers had dwindled. Now there remained only an old couple and their granddaughter, Rami. They alone kept watch over the treasure of the ancient gods. wooden ship appeared suddenly from the sky and attacked. stolen the key to the secret treasure. Good work. At last, this key is mine. And I wasn't there to stop them. I hate this. Hyper Cutie Bunny Chase! Huh? Rami, where have you been? Mm, well, I got hungry. So I went to the Mini Mart to get something to eat. At first I thought I wanted a burger, but then... 
You were supposed to be guarding the key. No. Save it in front of our ancestors. Shame, shame, shame on you. So yes, this is KO Flying Squadron. Uh, it's certainly a video game. Uh, and yes, we are in fact Rami the Bunny Girl. Uh, also, interesting thing that I have... I think this is like the first time I've seen in a game where the game has a... Like the shmup has a selectable hitbox. You can choose it what one of three positions. So you can have it either, like, uh, it kind of focuses on Rami, um, have it so that it's, like, somewhere in the middle, or you can have it where it focuses on the dragon. I I think that's actually kind of fascinating. Uh, also, there's your buttons. Uh, selectable speeds, which is interesting. Also, weirdly enough, you can uh, have the... I don't know if this is a relative scale that like five like my slow is now faster than my fast. But let's just leave it there. Lives. Uh difficulty we're gonna set them easy. Uh visuals, of course we're gonna need the visuals. Uh but let's go ahead and start. It has bottoms. And what were you doing while they were stealing the key from us? You went to get a snack! You fool! Ow! You don't have to get so upset about a dinky key! You don't understand anything! It was Dr. Poon who stole it from us! A super intelligent raccoon! His IQ is 1400! Can you even guess how important that key is? Well, what is the key for? It's for the secret treasure! Then what is the secret treasure, Grandma? Don't ask so many questions! The only thing I remember is... Uh, it's called Ark. Ark? I wonder what it is. Dr. Poon wants to use the Ark to turn this planet into a raccoon world. Hey, why not? Sounds like fun. What a fool you are. It was totally your fault. You know that. You really should. I guess you'll never learn. Well, listen, Rami. Until you get that key back, you will get no food. That's right. No key, no dinner. You'd better hurry and chase them down. I hate this. Hey, Spot, we gotta go. Spot, are you still sleeping? Wake up! <laughs> ah! Okay. So... Uh, this is a side-scrolling schmuck. Uh, if I remember correctly, you can use one of your options to do a stronger attack, and if you just stop shooting for a while, you'll just get another one back. Okay. Straightforward and sideway, or er, like a three way shot, so I tend to focus on stronger forward shots, so.
I do like the fact that when you move backwards, Rami looks backwards like she's backing up a car. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that is our, uh, ship speed, so I can hit this button here and I'll move faster. Uh, I tend to prefer keeping it on slow because, uh, easier to control, and also your default speed is pretty fast to begin with. Also, I am thinking that I probably shouldn't have played this on easy. <laughs> Uh, cause weirdly enough, for a shmup, uh, the easy difficulty is actually kind of easy, it seems like. Although, I'm gonna probably eat those words in about, oh, let's say five minutes. Okay, is there a different type of... Nope. Okay. Yeah, and also, it seems to be a pretty, a pretty, um, uh, what am I thinking? A pretty lenient, or a pretty, uh, low, or, um, a pretty small ramp in terms to max power. Like, it looks like it was, like, one or two, uh, attack power-ups to max power. I could actually kind of sort of understand what she said. I was like, oh, an octopus. Uh, also, one fun thing about this game, and by fun in air quotes, uh, is the fact that this is one of the more expensive uh, Sega CD games. Uh, because this did not get much print. Uh, I believe this is one that... Uh, like, this out... This is more expensive than Snatcher by default, so... I can't remember if this is now probably in the four figures range. Oh, nope, I take the back. We are actually still getting power-ups.
But here's a fun fact about the Sega CD. Uh, the Sega CD has some uh, has my favorite copy protection. Well, that's fine. The, the Sega CD has the my favorite copy protection, uh, which is it has no copy protection. Put that shit in a CDR. Ah, pick a long wing box. Uh, I will do that once we uh, switch games. Gotcha. I probably actually. Where's my phone at? I just might. Actually, let me go ahead and take care of that now because I just realized I gotta uh, grab my phone real quick. Okay, my phone was actually right next to me. Never mind. Okay, let's go, go and pick that long play box. All right, here we go. Oh, also, I need to make it... Wait, why is it... Uh, is it 200? Nope, that's too big. Uh, Just ig ignore the stuff on the right. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's why. Yeah. All right. If you need any pickings, go ahead. Or any description of what the boxes are. Oops. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you just want to tell me which uh, box you want me to open, I will go ahead and open it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting for a box. The reward. Oh, it's, it's what's on screen. You have to pick. You have to tell me which one you want. A21. Sneaky, sneaky. Let's see, what what am I doing after, because what, Vampire the Masquerade Redemption, and... Oh, uh, so those are for when I do the, um, those are for when I do the, the box streams like I did yesterday. Those are how you do that. I actually probably should have paused with Redemptions on that. Uh, sneaky, sneaky. A21. Uh, Thief 2 to Dark Age. Uh, so I'm going to have some fun PC stuff ahead of me. Because, uh, what, it's Vampire the Masquerade, Thief 2, and then Tombs and Treasures. Okay, dog. Oh, there's that. Oakley, Oakley. Oh, nope, I didn't want to turn off chatty. Let me go back there. I want to turn... Wait, I want to do this. Here we go. Back to the game. I I don't know why in my head I heard I just see Garrett and I thought oh the guy from the Witcher I'm like no that's a different that's a different thing What's the...
Coming up next, KO Flying Squadron Chapter 3, Inside the Silent Castle City. Push to start! Switch up. Oh, or not. Oh! That's got a new type of weapon. Oh, there, now they're swapping between the different types. I'm going to... There we go. I want to make sure that I had the... Just realized I didn't, I didn't have OPS stuff so I can see if the volumes are right. Uh, hello. Testing. <clears throat> One, two, three. Testing. Oh no, what is that? Attention, attention. You up there on the dragon, turn around and go home. Hey, you don't want to take on the US Navy, do you? Go home, kid, before you get hurt. Ha! Are you kidding? If I go home empty handed, my grandma will starve me to death. Better get out of my way. You think you can beat me with that toy ship? You got a lot to learn! Alright. 
I take on the US Navy. Where's the, okay, where's the first hitbox? Oh. Over here, we're actually in the jab. Oh shit! Uh, we're actually in the Japanese track or not? Coming up next, KO Flying Squadron Chapter Four. Another ambush. Push to start. Fast. Okay, so they give you a free... Whenever you die, you, you get a free power-up, or a set of power-ups, so that's at least nice. Noticing is that there is a del very slight delay when you hit the button to when you start firing. It's not that bad, but it's like kind of noticeable. Like, you can't really like tap it. And it's not input delay, because, or at least I don't think it's input delay because it's not like firing the speed it should be.
Yeah, so unfortunately I'm going for this with a split cut. Yeah, so really this game is just like it's a relatively pleasant little shmup that costs an arm and a leg if you want a copy, a legitimate copy. But thankfully, illegitimate copies can be made fairly easily. <laughs> Probably. Oh. Yeah, probably either speed up the bullets or it'll like increase the density of them. Yep. Yeah, I I have touched a number of these to know it's like, oh hey, it actually starts out easy and then To be honest, this is also probably me just playing sloppy. <laughs> Yeah, it's the fact that I, yeah, I'd expect it to ramp up faster is the thing. Also, there's part of me that's thinking that this is one of those games that's going to say, Oh, hey, you didn't play on the hardest difficulty, therefore you're not getting the full game. Also, it's weird to think about that the sequel to this is not, in fact, a shmup. This is just me playing sloppy. Okay, I'll fully admit that is just me playing sloppy. <laughs> yeah, 
That is... Oh. That is me looking at something else. I'm actually about to game over. Yeah, that's kind of weird, because, you know, I'd say that, but... Oh, thought I'd get lower. Wait. Alright. Okay, I think that's good for KO Flying Squadron. We saw quite a bit of that game. Oh, and that's not what we need. We need... Okay. Chaos okay, Flying Squadron. I believe we initially had this at... Um... Also, just to point out how long ago it was that I last took a look at that game, uh, that was episode 14 of Ranking of Shmups, which would be probably 2017? So yeah, needless to say, it's been a while since I've looked at that game. Um, that game is still pretty good. I want to say we had that at 5? Let's see, other oh, schmucks. We have a Spriggan for the Turbo CD. That's a Turbo CD game, not a Turbo 16 game. You know, weirdly enough, putting that right next to Samurai Pizza Cats, I feel it would be appropriate. Uh, but also Ray Force. Uh, Ray... or Ray Force, Ninja Masters, Mappy Arrangement, uh, Jamestown, Gyrus, Gunnack, Galaga Arrangement, yeah, kind of same vibes. I okay. Ein Uh, hmm. Hmm. I kind of like that as much as Ein I don't think I'd go much higher than Ein Hander. If I look here, let's see. I got Zugia, Zenik Neo, Tumbi. Yeah, I don't think it's four. Uh, five, I feel, is appropriate. Yep. Yeah, we actually looked at Geograph Seal not that long ago. Uh, so it'll be fun to go uh, back to Jumping Flash. Uh, which we'll be doing shortly, but not quite yet. Um, other than that, I think I the charm's kind of weird, but I kind of like it. And also, I think the music was good. Uh, also, use the hell out of its... CD... But, um, yeah. Anywho, uh, it is time to now move into the PlayStation block of today's episode, which is by going to be two-thirds of it. Uh, so. Yes, uh, technically we're going to go backwards in terms of time, but, uh, I feel like it's more appropriate that way. Glad you not backwards, but... We we're starting, we're doing the, the technically the latest game of this bunch last. Uh, and this is one that, um, it's kind of interesting because, uh, when I played it last, uh, it was a little harder because I was using, um, an emulator that didn't exactly have the best input lag, uh, and also just was an emulator, so... Uh, now that I actually have the mister, uh, and this has very, uh, minimal input lag, especially since I'm going to be using a natural PlayStation controller, uh, I think it is time, and especially since we're doing a rabbit episode, uh, why don't we do a game starring one of the best rabbits in video game history? 
Uh, so that's the second button. Also, that is very loud. I don't think there was a game that started the Techno Tecmo Bunny in, weirdly enough. Uh, but it's time to play a European PlayStation game. By Nanon Shaw. Because it's time for Faberbin. Uh, so this got released to the PlayStation 3 store. Uh, but it did not get, when it came out, it did not get an official US release. So, uh, if you're wondering about Vibribbon, what this is, Let's let Vibri explain how Vibri works in one of my favorite tutorial cutscenes in a game. So here's the thing that annoys me about this game. So the shapes are square, a circle, a loop, or a let's see, a square, a circle, little waves, and a pit. That's a triangle. This would have mapped perfectly on the face buttons, but they don't. So I'm actually probably gonna remap this. Actually, no, I can't. Shit. Yeah, this is where the game kind of starts to shit itself. So yeah, uh, so this probably got play in magazines, uh, but it didn't actually get released over here until the PlayStation 3. Weirdly enough. Okay, so. Also, I completely forgot what the buttons map to what. Um, actually, I need to, you know what? I'm gonna actually get out something. Uh, and yes, as as Jin was, or Jin was um, alluding to, uh, one of the, uh, in fact, the major gimmick about this game uh, is the fact that uh, this game, the actual game itself, is so tiny that it actually resides entirely in the RAM of the PlayStation. So, you can play this game entirely with any CD, or any audio CD, rather. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I could have been trying to have been spicy. And actually, because I do have a number of audio CDs lying around that I could have digitized. Uh, however, uh, instead of that, uh, I'm going to kind of sort of play it safe. Uh, I need to get... I'm trying to get a control guide up. Just so I can remember what the controls are. Okay. So, I'm going to warm up with Silver Cores. Uh, name it because I like the song. 
Uh, so this is Laughing Peas er, by uh, Laughing Peas. Also, I. Oh shoot! Right, I forgot. You cannot pause this game, or else you'll restart the entire game. Well, not the entire game, but the entire course. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it means either. I kind of screwed it up towards the end, but... Okay, so that's... Bad. All right, I just want to at least do that to warm up. Okay, now on to the main thing. So... Here's the thing. Uh... So here's the thing. Uh... Because the mister does not have a... Uh, CD drive, uh, I had to digitize some CDs. So... Uh, you can insert any any CD that has audio track data on it. Like, say, for example, uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, because, especially when I was toying around with the PlayStation, I was curious about something because there's something very uh, notorious about this disc, which you're about to hear. As you can see, this is a PlayStation Black Disc. Cut number one contains computer data, so please don't play it. But you probably won't listen to me anyway, will you?
Uh, so, I don't know. I don't think it will. Yeah, also... I'm... I'm kind of bad at this. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, it is... That is, like, my main problem with this. Which, actually, what I'm going to do... Is we're gonna do a little bit of, uh... Pokering around. So, uh... Let's see. So, we are going to... Okay, so... X is gonna stay X. Uh... So, can I do this? Okay, good. And then... Okay, so that should actually... So this actually might be a better binding. Okay, so... Now on to the Agile stuff. So I did, so I, I just stuck with kind of game music. Uh, so we have Famicom 20th Anniversary. So I had this CD, which is a arrangement tracks of stuff for the Famicom's 20th Anniversary and the soundtracks to Gradius 1 through 4. Uh, so let's try this one. Now here's the thing that I found. The tracks did not bind correctly to what was which. So we're gonna find and see how this works. It did not bind. It did not bind at all. Oh, shoot. Uh... Okay, you know what? So, we, are, we get... We get this, so let's... Let's just po poke around at this. Okay. Okay, let's... Let's just do this. Keep current CD. Oh. Wait. Oh, I guess auto is just play the entire CD. Okay. That was a weird skip. Yeah, this song kind of starts out weird. I forgot who did this remix of Dr. Mario. I am 
So unfortunately, I, with the auto, there's no way to change the track, which that's kind of disappointing. Let's try the other CDs. Um, all right, let's try this. Oh god, Vivi's are going real fast. Oh. So, and this is probably a thing with the auto-generation, is that it really seems... It kind of gets to the beat, but not quite. Yeah, because that's like the default difficulty, because let's see... Okay, maybe this forces it to be... Okay, uh, let's see... Okay. Uh, let's see if I can find Burning Heat. Let's try 27. Okay, I'm curious. Does it actually... So that was 27, so let's try track... 18. There we go. Is it gonna... There weren't enough... There wasn't enough part of the song to hit the thing. That's a slight problem. Uh, oh, whoops. I need to do... I guess let's do bronze. Alright, let's change the CD. Ready's four should, or three or four should have. Um, let's see, if this is going to be intro. Let's try this. Oh, hey, I had you timed it.
Yeah, it kind of didn't. Now I'm curious, did that actually, like... Oh, oh back. Okay. That's CD of my own choice. Single track. Get current CD. Let's try this. Why don't I always complete one song? <laughs> Yeah, that is like, the problem is that it's giving me way too hard of socks, which is kind of my main problem with this game, uh, is that it really is dependent upon what it gives you from the song, and it's really inconsistent about what is what. So, yeah, that's kind of my issue with this game, is that it's kind of hard. Because uh, also, I think the control scheme, which you can't change, by the way. So I think if you go to back... Because all you have is vibration in the sound effects. So... There's that. So, yeah, that's Vib Ribbon. Like, I really... Th like, I think the basic concept of the game... It's fine. The problem is, is that it is really, like, and if you play, like, the default songs it gives you, it's fine. Because they're generally, actually, not that bad of songs. Like, it's a good soundtrack. And, like, the, whatever you'd call it, the charts, are actually fairly, uh, they're pretty fairly done. But the problem is that they just, when you get to the actual, like, neat part of the game, it kind of just becomes a mess. Uh, and it's really hard to gauge whether or not you're going to actually get it or not. So... Yeah, it's a little bit of a mixed bag in terms of, like, whether or not it will even work right. Yeah. It is, in fact, it is very impressive, but the problem is it's also a massive asshole. Uh, part of, in the fact that it is so weirdly specific, part of me thinks that actually, uh, I don't know if I can even rank it normally, because it was at at 7. But it really is highly dependent upon whether or not you, um... What songs you put in. Because you can, you could theoretically get, like... Put in music that's actually fairly balanced, but... You're not, like... You're not guaranteed it. And sometimes the game will just give you a song that, like... If you want to play on a easier difficulty... Sometimes it's literally impossible not to be able to beat songs. Which, that's kind of weird that they don't, like, account for that. Uh, so honestly, I'm actually gonna... I'm leaning towards 420 because... It's hard to, like, you can't... It's what you... You get what you put out of it. Like, it's kind of... It's like Electroplankton, almost, in a way, where it's like, yeah, technically it works, but... It's really dependent upon what you put in. So, I think with that, it's kind of hard to gauge Fit Ribbon. Also, I think that the black and white is very fitting for Fit Ribbon. So, anyway, uh, that'll be it for Vib Ribbon. So, uh, before we move on to the next game, I will be right back.
All right, so. If we're doing PlayStation games and we're doing Rabbit games, there is a series that we will be... will be complete waste to not touch. Uh, especially since these are some very good games that kind of are criminally... They kind of did not have enough done with them. Uh, and this is one of the first games that I played on the PlayStation. I played this first, the first level in this game a lot. Uh, because I think this actually was a PlayStation launch title or a US launch title. It wasn't in Japan, but it was, I think, over here. So I think this was on a demo disc that kind of came with the thing. So yes, this is Jumping Flash. Jumping uh, as alluded to earlier, this is essentially a spiritual predecessor or a sequel to uh, Exact's game uh, Geograph Seal, uh, which this takes a lot of the concepts from. Uh, however, this is much more platforming based. Like it's much more of a um, Geograph Seal is more of an action game, and this is more of a actually kind of a first-person platformer, which you think wouldn't work. But, as we'll see. This actually works quite well. Those are divided into worlds, with each world having three stages. So, uh, yeah, it is a first person platformer with a gun. Uh, so, um, as this is very early PlayStation, controls are a little bit rudimentary. So you have left and right turn, forward and, like, like, forward. Uh, you do not have any sort of strafing, which is a little annoying. You kind of have it in the air if you hold down jump. But yeah, uh, the goal of each level is to... Basically, find four jet pods and get to the exit. Uh, however, there are also reasons to explore. Uh, very akin to a Sonic. Where are you? Uh, no, uh, it, it probably was like in a reference to... Okay, where are you? something there's a there it is uh very akin to a sonic if you go over here we'll get a bonus stage Uh, so, fun fact, you can hold up the three special weapons. Yeah. Uh, each of those special weapons are, in fact, your other subtypes of, um... Uh, they're all fireworks-themed, but they are effectively your, uh, alternate fire types in Geograph Seal. Like, I believe the rockets are essentially the horming. From uh, Geograph Seal. Also, if you get all the balloons, you will uh, you will get a one up. Also, I think did I do I have? No, I do not. 
Underneath the little bouncing thing, you can see that there are uh, lights up. That show you whether or not you have all the jet pods or not. There we go. Uh, so Jump Flash Shoot probably does have a consistent frame, more fr consistent frame rate. But yeah, this is. Yeah. Uh, also, much other also like Sonic, uh, you have. Um, Uh, you have special bonuses, like I believe there is one. Actually, I'll, oop. Uh, you also have um, Ready to go? Uh, extra bonuses Ready? that you get for doing special stuff, like that shooting, which I'm gonna try and get actually for this one. And like not taking damage and like yeah. stuff like that. That's it. Uh, I think there's also a because if you see, if you look at the jet pod, all of them are in like have letters. If you spell out exit in the proper order, you will get a bonus as well, if I remember correctly. Oh, I guess there is no shooting. There is not a pacifist bonus. Okay, so now we should be fighting a boss. Uh, also, this is a circle to confirm game, weirdly enough. Let me not hit the right button again. Uh, also, one thing I want to try out, because we're not cheating. Uh, let me do this, because this has a save state, just in case, because... There's a couple things, actually, that the mister can do, and I think that there actually supports for this. Uh, this has widescreen, which it doesn't... It's not going to look right quite yet. It also has some of this, but also it has, I'm curious. Oh, it's probably under miscellaneous? Yes. So let's try this. So yeah, this has a uh, 16 by nine support. Ready to go? Also, I can make the game run faster. Although this looks, this feels weird. But yes, if you want to 
Um, but problem. Uh, if you want to increase the CPU speed of the PlayStation, you can actually... Uh, most emulators will let you s increase the CPU speed so you can get a uh, better frame rate out of it. That's the exit. How does this? It's T. Did I miss him? Okay. Huh. Guys, real quick. Uh, also, I'm going to turn off the widescreen because I don't like the fact that the um, just the sprite stuff is not is stretched and it looks weird. Yep, see I got an extra bonus for doing it. Getting the uh, things in order.
And yet there are maze sections. Uh, there were ones like this in uh, Geograph Seal as well. Okay, so there is a free aim. Okay. some help right now. Yeah. Perfect. That... Okay, at least stop the beeping. I do believe if you retire that you can uh, go and uh, save.
Ready to go? Yep, because we're... We're in, like, an amusement area. Uh... Thank you for the follow. Yeah, I I love this game. It is so good. This is starting. Yeah. E. Okay, where is the missing jet? Ah, there it is. That you're moving. Yes. All right. Now where is? Oh, Eggs is blinking. Oh, I remember this stage.
Let's see. So, I'm gonna actually check something real quick. What happens if I do retire? Because I think it should save. Yeah, it does. Jumping flash. There, save that. So, uh, with that, why don't we just go ahead and move on to our next game, which, uh, coincidentally, is Jumping Flash 2. <laughs> Uh, which, uh, as we'll see shortly, uh, very familiar, similar to the first game. Though, that ain't a bad thing, because this game's very good. the person whom is in charge of the uh, Universal City Hall? Ah, good. This is the mad scientist, Baron Aloha, talking to you. Listen, Donka, I have question for a simple favor. In the backwater reaches of the galaxy lies a tiny planet known as Little Moo that is used by Baron Aloha as his secret hideout. The Baron returned to his home away from home to rejuvenate from a recent beating he took at the hands of the feet of that heroic battle buddy known as Robert. He was in the process of inventing a better, stronger, more absurd way to overthrow the universe when Little Moo is visited by a stranger. In fact, there is nothing stranger in the universe than the creature known only as Captain Kabuki. Tipping the scales at a whopping 220 bazillion tons, he uses a kung fu grip larger than metropolitan Chicago to shred Little Moo and add it to his fantastic collection of bottled wonderlands. 
Using his keen sense of villain timing, Baron Aloha hastily departs the scene and lands upon a small asteroid. Unable to cope with the monstrosity that is Kabuki, he calls Universal City Hall and begs for help as his beloved hideaway is made into so much Swiss cheese. After listening to the Baron's plight, the interstellar dispenser of justice decides to send the only being capable of dealing with a menace such as Captain Kabuki, the freedom-loving, robo-heroic Robert. Tuned up and ready to go the distance, Robert leaps to the scene. Jumping Flash 2, Big Trouble in Little Moo. All right, I thought I had a little bit more time because I had to go grab some real quick. But yeah, this is Jumping Flash 2, the return, Big Trouble in Little Moo. Oh, I, oh, it doesn't have the save. So, uh, controls are pretty much the same. Uh, everything pretty much is the same. Let's do it. Uh, you have a different AI this time. Wait. Performance? What does performance do? Also, I want to make sure that... I wonder if I thought... Oh, maybe I have to unlock that. Okay. Anyway, let's start. Yeah, this came out the year after. So let's see how different this is. Even by default, the the performance does seem to be a little bit better. I wouldn't say it's like a huge amount. And yeah, for the most part, it seems to basically just be quality of life changes. So there are new, uh, new little extra things. Yeah, there's a lot more detail to everything. Now, the star thing at the bottom, actually, there is an explanation on why they give those. Um, 
Let me actually check to see something. Oh, okay, so the performance medals are what you see down there. Um... Okay, so let's see. What are the performance medals? Does it have a guide for... Performance medal, FAQ. So... Uh... Let's see. Okay, let's see. Performance medals. Let's see. You get... Uh, so there is the door prize, which is you basically, you just get it. Um, the flower child. Uh, beat any level without st uh, shooting any bullets. Uh, bunny of steel. Beat any level without taking any damage. Uh, systematic salvation. Collect exit in any... Uh, in order, basically complete action in order. Uh, El Dorado, hold three of the same type of fireworks at the same time. Uh, Penny Pincher, collect all enemy money in a level. Super Stomper, stomp on seven or more enemies without touching the ground. Uh, Frugal Fireworks, use fireworks in some special way. Yeah, basically just kill a lot of enemies with fireworks. Kodos. Defeat one of the, uh, one of every type of enemy in the game. Bonus Bonanza. Play all the bonus levels in uh, normal and extra mode. Uh, big Trouble. No Sweat. Beat all levels on normal mode. Hasta la Vista Baron. Uh, beat all levels on extra mode. So it's basically achievements. Let's do it. Yes, that's all. Yeah, so there's extra mode. There's actually two other modes where, yeah, it's basically the same game, but it's slightly harder. Uh, there's also hyper mode, which is you get new ability or super mode, which you get new abilities as well. Like you can jump up six times in a row. Yeah.
Let's do it. Take that. I uh, did nothing. development this has turned out to be. Hey, Baron. Robert's here. We're saved. Just because he's the hero don't mean you got to root for him. Axel. Sheesh. What a grouch. Let's do it! But that's... Dark Route. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't think a first-person platformer would work as well as this does, but it does. Actually, I'm curious, because we saw the other game with Turbo. I wonder what Turbo is like on this one.
Yummy. Let's do it! Oh, gotta go the other way. Thank <laughs> you. 
Naughty little space bunny. Oh, I could give your tail such a nasty tweak. Robert seems to be really getting to him, Baron. Yeah, but just wait to see how he does with this challenge. He's not such a hot shot of a hero. <laughs> you want Robert to win, don't you? Yet. 
I do really like in this game that you can just basically, like, you have a good enough jump that you can pretty much, like, if you can see it, you can pretty much just jump to it. Let's do it!
shop. Oh no! One more time. Yeah, it's kind of a one of the bummers about this game is the fact that uh Uh there is no checkpoints in this game. There is you do the entirety of the level over again. Which granted these levels aren't that long. And like a majority of it is figuring out where things are, so. Invincible.
All right. All right. Rabbit, I'll make you into a dust bunny. <laughs> dust bunny. <laughs> to quit out of this. Jumping Flash 2! Big trouble in Little So we're gonna continue, or we're gonna save here. Okay, now can I see the performance house? There we go. Door Prize, Eldorado, Semantic Health Salvation. There we go. Okay, so that's what that is. There we go. Alright, so that's gonna do it for Jumping Flash 2. Uh, but before I actually rank this, I'm actually gonna be right back. All right, so I took care of that. Let's put these back up. Uh, so these were like very high up. Like I want to say these were two and like three and two respectively. Um, hmm. Like. Trying to see what else do we got. Like, we got... We have Gun Gauge, at least, which I like Jumping Flash so much. So, there are definitely at least three. Let's see. Two, we have Trespassers. Rocket Eye Adventures, Return of the Oberdin. Uh... Adrenal Level 3. Blast Rounds is 0. Kirby Superstar. Monolith Monster Maulers. Twinkle Star Sprites. Yeah. You know what? I am going to actually... Yes. Yeah. Thankfully, they actually fixed the re-release because apparently it got put up, then got taken down again. Uh, which is kind of funny, but, um, anyway. Yeah, I... These are... 
an action or a first person platformer shouldn't work as well as it does in these games. Like, sure, they could have a little bit of control be better, but honestly, the controls work pretty good for what they are. Uh, so I am actually going to go ahead and do this. Jumping Flash 2 is just probably one of my favorite games. Uh, these were 3 and 2. I think it should be 2 and 1 because Jumping Flash 1 is pretty much not like it is a slight downgrade from 2. But these games are just really good. Uh, for very old, uh, for a very old platformer, or like first person platformer, these have no rights to be as good as they, they do, but they do. Uh, these games are just very good. So I think it is worthwhile to put Jumping Flash 2 at 1. Uh, now, unfortunately, Someone has to go take care of Robert Mondew, but considering how much uh, Hilltop and Cargadin are knocking at all the PlayStation games to be translated out of the park, uh, I feel like it's like it, it's only a matter of time before Robert Mondew gets uh, their treatment. Although, granted, that game has a lot of voice acting, so it's going to probably be a little bit difficult. But anyway, yeah, Jumping Flash. Those games are very good. Um, and yeah, uh, I wish that they're, they did more stuff, but Exact and Japan Studio are no longer. So uh, it's going to take the indie scene to do it. Uh, there was a game called, I think it's like Fulva Popo or Polpo or something, which was like, oh yeah, it's like Jumping Flash. But I, I personally didn't click up with that game. So... Uh, your mileage may vary, but I've heard... Uh, I want to say it's Forza Pulpo is, I believe, the name. Uh, let me actually look that up. Yes, it is. Forza Pulpo. Now I'll spell it out. Uh, so you can see it. I believe it is. That is how it is. Like. That's how it's put in Steam. Um, and yeah, that is a game that is like Jumping Flash, although it has some mechanical differences that your mileage may vary. Um, anyway, that'll do it for today. Uh, it is a... Good start to 2023, uh, and I hope uh, we'll see how the future brings for these streams. Uh, and I don't, I feel like we're probably not going to be getting ones every stream, but uh, yeah, uh, we shall see in the future. And anyway, let's close this out. Uh, thank you all for watching. My personal Twitter slash co-host is at LoadPuzzlo. I do have a Discord, you can check the community tape part polls and do other fun stuff. Uh, you can find that by going to club.hazel.town. I do also have a coffee page, uh, which you can put post costs and various other things. Uh, if you're watching this on a VOD, you can watch this live Fridays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturdays at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, theater.hazel.town, or twitch.tv slash Um And there is also the VOD channel, which you can find by going to be, be kind Uh Monday, Wednesday, Friday uploads of VODs. This one will go up on Friday. And there's also two shows there, Media Delta and Hazeltown Story, which don't get shown because they're pre-recorded. And uh, they're not shown here. You can find it on the YouTube channel or the podcast channel, which you can find by going to radio.hazel.town. Thursdays, 8 a.m. Eastern uploads. So on Friday, we are ta taking a look at uh, Famicom Jump, which is a game that was made for the 20th anniversary of Shonen Jump, uh, which is an I believe it's an action RPG that has a bunch of characters from the Jump uh, manga, like Fist of the North Star and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Dr. Slump and uh, uh, Captain Subasa and uh, I'm trying to look uh, that one cop thing that I can never 
figure out what it is. Uh, and Saint Seiya. Uh, and Kinikuman. And that one Bobo Taro one that I see a lot, but never knew what it was. Uh, also, is that... That wolf also looks kind of like... It doesn't... That Silver Fang is not in there, is it? I'll have to look it up. Anyway, we'll find out. Um, yeah. Uh, also, much like the rest of this, my stream, or people I know are streaming are... It's a little weird timing, so... Uh, again, I'm going to let you enjoy your January 1st as you choose. So, have a good rest of what time is watching. Bye-bye.